This is part 18 of refurbishing a vintage model steamboat and it's all about fitting the boiler water feed hand pump. I'm going to use the original pump that came with the boat. This is a standard Stuart models pump. It's well made and it will do the job perfectly. It's all going to need piping up of course but one problem I have with it is actually fitting it in the boat. The space is very very tight in here. In order to make the pump accessible it needs to overhang the base plate but this is not a good state of affairs so I'm going to make a couple of modifications. As you can see by this piece of wood there's quite a big space underneath the base plate so all I have to do is make a simple clamp. This will clamp underneath the base plate and then the pump can be held in place at the rear with just a couple of bolts going through the base plate itself. So the first thing to do is to silver solder the fitting. Soft soldering wouldn't be strong enough. For small jobs I normally silver solder on a piece of locomotive fire grate on the top of my vise. And what I'm doing at the moment is spreading some flux, this is easy flow number two flux, onto a piece of brass, which I then press into position on the second piece of brass. After which the entire assembly needs to be heated up with the blow lamp. And I'm using my battery powered igniter for the initial spark, just in case you're wondering what that clicking noise was. Even though I've done three or four videos about the silver soldering process, I still get people contacting me for advice. And I do apologise, but it's nearly impossible to answer everyone, otherwise one hour of my day would be just answering emails. And as I'm not yet retired and won't be for some time, I do have to work, so I cannot sit about answering emails all morning. For those people who are still struggling, I'll run through it one more time while this is happening. You need to get plenty of heat, you need to get the correct flux that works with your silver solder, but there is a fine line between cremating the work. If the piece of brass melts, it's too hot. If the piece of brass just sits there with blobs of silver solder hanging around on it, you don't have enough heat, or you're not using the right type of flux. Some people seem to get confused with brazing and silver soldering. It's a different process entirely. You need a lot more heat, everything needs to glow red, and you need special flux for the type of heat you're going to be generating. For brazing you have to get the work extremely hot, and if you use the wrong kind of flux what will happen is the flux will oxidise and turn black, and if you've got black flux on the work it's not going to do its job as a metal cleaner. If you look at this work at the moment, it's just about reaching the right temperature. Check it by the flux. When the flux takes on a watery appearance, apply some silver solder. I originally used this small stick of silver solder to apply the flux to the work. So when I put the stick into the flame, I get a little bit of extra flux. That's cheating really. I'm also putting too much silver solder on, just so you can see what's happening. You will notice that initially it blobs slightly, and then as the work gets hotter, by capillary action, the silver solder runs into the joint. Look at the colour of it, take notice of it, I'll put a bit more on just so you can see. It's just beginning to be red, it's not glowing bright red and it's certainly not melting and dropping through the bars. I can actually silver solder a little bit better than this, but I'm putting too much silver solder on in order to clearly show how I do it. Once the work has cooled to black and been quenched in water, it's time to process it for the next part of the operation. And you might wonder why I'm using some Loctite 601 on this part. To stick it to the pump maybe? Well, perhaps. What I need to do is drill a couple of holes accurately in this bracket that correspond with the holes already in the pump. So I can either use a scriber or I can use a punch or I can temporarily stick the pump to the bracket and then drill through the existing holes in the pump which then can be threaded to take the bolts. This is a very unengineering way of looking at it, but it was something that I was taught many years ago by a very competent engineer. And I've always done the same thing. Whichever method makes the job easier, for me, has to be good. So once I drilled a couple of holes in the bracket, and these are one eighth of an inch in diameter, which is tapping size for 4BA, I proceeded to tap the holes with a 4BA tap. This is a very old, very blunt 4BA tap. And I thought, well, what I better do as I'm making a video is change this tap for one that's actually sharp. You can tell that it's blunt by the squeaking noise that it's making. So I changed the tap for one that's a little bit sharper. And as you can now hear or not hear, it's making a lot less noise. And when I look at this tap, I remember this is one that I modified for a job a good while back. So it's one that I sharpened on the grind wheel. 
A quick note about model engineering processes, and the term model engineering covers an awful lot of different jobs. You need different skills for all of these different jobs. Silver soldering is very different to tapping a hole in a piece of metal. You need to have knowledge of how to tap in brass, how to tap in steel, and a wealth of information at your fingertips. Now you can Google this, or you can watch videos on YouTube, which does make it a lot simpler than it used to be. But the best way to do it is to drill holes in pieces of scrap metal and tap threads in them. And after you've broken a few taps and probably a few drills in the process, you will then get the picture. And then it becomes easier because you can do things with confidence. If you're scared or hesitant with any of these processes, you're more likely to make a mistake. So really, with experience comes confidence and that's what you need. This is a shot of a piece of sandpaper. It's what I use to clean up the final component. With both of the accurately drilled holes successfully threaded, it's time to bolt the assembly together. I'm using a couple of bolts with screw slots in the top, and these two bolts are more than strong enough to hold the bracket to the pump base. And once this second bolt is screwed into position, all that remains to be done is a test fit of the part in the bolt. This is not going to be sufficient, of course, to hold the pump. It's going to need a couple more bolts towards the back end of the pump to fasten it to the bed plate but it really is going to be going nowhere. Using a boiler feed pump to pump pressure in excess of 80 psi as you put the water into the boiler means that the pump needs to be very solidly mounted to whichever base you're going to use. It's easy when it's outside of a boat and there's plenty of room, but in this boat it is so tight. In the position I need it to fit, and it needs to fit there so that it counterbalances the condenser on the other side, there's not much room at all and I actually had to modify the pump base itself to get it in exactly the right position. And as you can see, fitting the boiler into the boat is difficult enough. I even broke the gauge glass on one attempt, but thankfully I've got plenty of gauge glasses so I can replace it easily enough. And it fits okay, and there's plenty of room to get your hand in to move the pump handle, which is always useful when you're trying to pump water into a boiler. So once the boiler finally fitted in position, and also allowed the pump to be in the correct place, it was time to remove the boiler again and use my electric drill to very, very carefully drill two eighths of an inch diameter holes in the bed plate, being very careful not to drill through the bottom of the boat. After which I tapped them 4BA, and these two 4BA bolts hold the back of the pump down onto the bed plate. The final job in this episode was to simply vacuum out all the metal shavings that were in the boat. I will probably give this yet another coat of paint, as you can see, the paint has got marked. It's very difficult not to mark the paint, because the boiler is such a tight fit. But when I finally finish it, I put it in ever so carefully. And as you can see now, the hand pump is in a perfect position. Plenty of room to get your fingers in, without burning them or cutting them on the side of the metal. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.